What are the different types of computer programming can you do? What are the jobs and what are the languages that they use? Let's talk about that. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a computer science and software development professor at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. So let's talk about the different types of programming that we see in the everyday world and what you need to do if you want to do those careers. So let's give you 10 examples of projects and what's special about them. So first of all, if you're going to be a web developer, you're probably going to have to start off with this HTML language. And you can see some code here and how it generates into text on a web browser. So this is a very beginner level thing that you can learn and then of course adapt it to more complex applications later. But web programming is a big deal when it comes to getting software jobs. Also, you might wanna learn how to program using C Sharp, which is good at creating all kinds of applications, but as beginners in see it, they would probably think of these graphical user interfaces. These are desktop applications that run in Windows. And so this is a very easy way to pick up programming. So that's our second example of what kind of projects you can make with programming. Sometimes programming focuses in on strictly data processing. And so as you can see in this application, it produces text on a screen with a console input. And so if you start learning Python or Java, this is probably your first experience with a language. You can do more things with those, of course, but this is usually the first step in understanding how to code with these. Sometimes people work with programming and they think of video games. So this is an example here of the Unity game engine. So a competitor to that would be Unreal. Uh, this program it's right here is written in C Sharp and C++ is what you would use for the Unreal Engine. There's lots of other game engines, but those are the famous two. So half of the job in this type of work is to configure objects on the screen with properties. And then the other half is to manipulate those with computer code. But that's a project that you can do with computer programming. And so if you worked at a factory and you were running automation software, you would probably be working with PLCs or process control logic uh, gadgets here. So there's a variety of programming languages that work with this, but the idea here is to automate. If you're interested in learning that, then I would recommend that you buy one of the kits from Arduino. For $100 or less, you can get a robotic arm and the controller to go with it and all the associated electronics. Or maybe you want to create a radio controlled car or some kind of a security camera for your home. Some kind of automation. And so Arduino is kind of a way to get into the field without spending $100,000 on a massive computer in a factory. Another way that people learn to program is through block programming. So this is obviously designed for kids with this cat called Scratch. MIT created this programming environment for learning at the lower even elementary grade levels, but it's pretty sophisticated. You can do functions and loops and everything else that you would do in most programming languages, but this is a drag and drop interface. So sometimes people learn programming by dragging blocks around. Another type of programming is creating apps. So this is a big field obviously with phones and app development usually works for either Android or the iOS operating system. So your specialty languages here are Kotlin and Swift or even Java. So learning application development here is going to be slightly different than the others that we mentioned before, but a lot of overlap. Some people view programming as a way to solve difficult problems. So statisticians are going to be working with programming languages such as R and they're going to work with big data solutions. So in this case, obviously we're trying to show some kind of a geographical distribution of an event or some kind of a population. And so these kinds of solutions are big data operations. And so it's computer programming, but in the context of statistics. Another type of job is embedded systems. So we all have gadgets that have electronics in them from your dryer and your wash machine to the toys, to your car, to your phone, to your watch. Everything it seems has firmware. So firmware is the software that is embedded on the, on the chip. And so it's there to provide like an operating system or maybe a user interface so you can control the device. So these types of programs communicate directly with the hardware reading voltage from wires and sensors that are based in the hardware itself. So not so much an application designer, but somebody who controls a machine. Now, all of these have an overlap. So if you decide that you're going to become a specialist in, let's say, robotics, 
you're probably going to be able to pick up one of the other specialties. So at least half of what you know in any of these specialties is going to apply to others. So if you feel like you've made the wrong choice and you are no longer interested in one type of solution, then you can probably retrain and become expert in another. So overlap is pretty big. So where are you going to learn all this stuff? Well, there's a lot of ways to become trained and to teach yourself even. So the first and the cheapest and the most available is just to go online. So here's a picture of my YouTube channel. So I specialize in web development and cybersecurity and mobile applications and databases. So those are the things that I teach most often in the degree that I'm working with. So if that interests you, then go check out the channel. There's a lot of free content. And then I've got some links to some more uh, premium content for more in-depth items. Another way that people like to learn is to go to a boot camp. So a boot camp is about one semester of work. They're kind of expensive. They cost anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000 for that one semester. But people sometimes say it's very worth it because you don't have to invest four years at a university and you get just enough training to get you started. So sometimes people that have one degree and they want to just specialize in a new language or a new technology, they might find a boot camp as useful. So some of the things that you would learn at boot camps are web development or app development or probably statistics and big data. Those are some things that I've seen that are common. So it's focused, it's intense, and the intent is to get you a job. However, if you can't produce a good project by the end of the semester, then you're probably not going to get employed even if you have completed the program. So make sure that you learn something and able to demonstrate it later. Of course, the university is a great way to learn. It does cost, it costs you four years of your life. And four years is pretty good when you consider that it's going to be a valuable degree that people recognize. So at uh, some universities, you can spend a lot of money. At Grand Canyon, where I teach, uh, the, the going rate is about $8,000 a year for tuition after all of the discounts and promotions that they try to get entice you with. So that might sound expensive to some of you, but if you've priced out what college costs at state schools or private schools, it's a pretty good deal. And by the way, the weather is great here in winter. Now, other ways that you can learn is just to go to your local university or your community college. Here in Arizona, uh, a college for two years is about $1,000 a year or so in tuition. It's pretty inexpensive. Uh, the government is obviously giving a lot of subsidies to make these things work. And you can transfer your credits to a university if you want to. However, there's a lot of two-year degrees that have very practical information. So in the context of programming, you might become a web developer or a mobile app developer, and you might be able to get started with your career with very little investment. Whatever your choice is for how you learn, make sure that you have good results when you're done. So have a practical project that demonstrates your skills. Employers really can't tell what you know just by looking at a resume and a good grade point. So make sure that you have something that's relatable to the type of work that you're trying to grab. So if you're applying for a mobile app developer, for example, make sure you have some mobile apps published in the store so that way they can see how well it works. This is going to help you greatly in your interviews. You're going to be able to explain yourself in one picture, which we know, of course, is worth a thousand words. So if you have an app or you have a robot or you have a website or something that relates to the job you're applying for, your odds are going to be very good that you're making a good impression. So pick a language. What are you going to do if you're a beginner and you're trying to pick something to start with? So if you haven't programmed before, I would recommend that you choose Python or C Sharp as a great place to start. Python is pretty famous for being simple and C Sharp is great for getting graphical user interfaces up and running quickly. Also, if you want to think about the future, those two languages fit very well with what professionals are doing. So here's a list of nine languages that professionals are getting jobs with and building entire careers on. So you don't have to learn all nine of these, but if you learn one or two, you're probably well situated depending on the type of work that you're trying to target. So if you're looking for a good place to start, uh, how about if I just suggest here, this is the beginning C Sharp tutorials. Uh, you can be up and running in a day with some programs that you can show your friends. So subscribe and make sure that you follow along.